All across this world, brave skeletons fight back the filthy fleshbag armies that would accost them. Now I know, I know, don't get too offended, YouTube tells me the analytics on this, most of my viewers are fleshbags. But consider this, dear viewer, inside of every flesh bag is a skeleton waiting to be liberated. In service to this liberation, I've documented the skeleton army's takeover of the lands between. This is how many skeletons does it take to beat Elden Ring. And here's how we'll find out. I'll start with the stock skeletal militiamen spirit ashes plus 10 and have them fight against the story bosses in the game. Each time the skeletons fail to kill a boss, I will add more skeletons to the group and challenge the boss again. Repeating this process until the skeletons have defeated the Elden Beast, thus answering our question. Starting at the fifth skeleton added, I will be adding a variety of different skeletons since there are so many of them in this game. And starting at the tenth skeleton added, I will be adding the large variant that wields the Great Axe or the Glaive. And every fifth thereafter will be the large variant. So with that, let's jump into it. The first story boss, as always, is Margit the Fell Omen, and the skeletons had an exciting fight with him here. Take a look. Already in the first fight and their ability to resurrect is coming in very clutch. Unrelated, but one of the cool details I just now noticed is that there's poop shoots on the side of Stormvale Castle. Since everything is lore relevant in the game, I like to think this particular diarrhea waterfall came from one of Godric's 12 sphincters. I can't be too sure though, Miyazaki won't answer my emails. Speaking of Godric, he's the next boss in the story. Let's see how our two skeletons do against him. A close fight, but not really because of the resurrection ability. Next up, due to some comments I've received on my last video, I've been made aware of a new route I can take. And because of that, I've decided to do Radon for my second great rune, since he's required for this route anyway. And if you don't know, if you want to do Radon as your first or second great rune, it requires you to do some stuff with Rani's questline, which first requires you to fight Royal Knight Loretta. Here's the skeleton boys against her.
the resurrection ability comes in clutch again. Long ago, and search now for the dark path, that I might one day upend the whole of it, and rid the world of all that came before. Well, has that roused thy interest? You've certainly roused something, am I right, I boys? Anyway, I'll spare you most of the details, but another required boss on this route is the Mad Pumpkin Head because you have to talk to Selen. And here's the skeletons absolutely shitting on him. So after Pumpkinhead, we can fight Radon. And it didn't go well for our two skeletons, to say the least. Their poise was broken in pretty much one hit. They did resurrect a couple times, making it a long fight, but I'll spare you most of it. I added three more skeletons for the second fight, and they did get close to phase two, but still not even close. So I'm gonna have to add a lot more skeletons the next fight. For the next attempt, I added five more skeletons. And one of these was supposed to be the large variant, but I messed up in spawning them. But the fight ended up being really close and hilarious, so I kept the footage anyway. Here, take a look. Wow, he had all of them dead, and he would have won, too, if he didn't decide to do the homing soul mass attack right after killing them. Incredible. With Radon dead, that gives us access to the hole in the ground that takes us to Necron, Eternal City, where the next required boss is the Mimic Tier. And I gave her a bunch of strength and the Giant Crusher to make this a closer fight, as well as decreasing the skeleton count because Radon was a huge bottleneck. And here's how it went. With the Mimic Tier dead, the next boss in our Skeleton's Path is the Twin Gargoyle fight, and they have some attacks that are pretty effective against Skeletons. For example, when they do the Poison Spray attack, it's pretty devastating on the Skeletons because it kills them and then instantly takes away their ability to resurrect. Both 5 and 8 Skeletons were not nearly enough, so I added 2 more to get to 10 and we get our first large axe-wielding Skeleton. Let's see how they do. A hard and long-fought victory for the Skeleton Army. F-Boys down bad.
Now to the final boss before we're allowed into Langdale, Fia Sim. Brutal, but that's what they get for being simps, which are the natural prey of skeletons. After killing the simps, we go through this teleporter, and this completes the alternate route. This avoids the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Which means next up is Godfrey Golden Shade Edition, and the skeletons were absolutely vicious here. Take a look. One day Godfrey will win one of these. Today is not that day. And now, after killing his dad's ghost, the skeletons move on to kill Morgan himself. Man, I'm just realizing the plot of this game is super weird. The next required boss in the story is the Fire Giant, and the ten skeletons had a long and hard fought battle against him, but they eventually faced defeat. I won't show all of it because it was honestly over 11 minutes long, this one skeleton kept respawning, um, and he, you can see how close he was, it was very tragic when I was watching this. I added three more skeletons and gave it another shot. Here's what happened. Holy crap, they devoured him. I have never seen a group of enemies so focused. I guess they just really wanted to kill the biggest flesh bag in the game. With the fire giant dead, we get to deliver Melina to his fireplace, where she commits an act of suicidal terrorism. This plot makes sense for skeletons, because they would want to kill everything, but this, under normal circumstances, this plot has me scratching my head. Anyway, the skeletons now get to fight their arch nemesis, the flesh bags that are wearing flesh bags. And it didn't go well for them after I reduced the count to 10. And I reduced it because usually the fire giant is a huge bottleneck. But not in this case. I upped the count back to 13 and this is the fight that happened.
Next up is Malaketh, and this was our 13 skeletons' first attempt. When I make these videos, I'm always rooting for the enemies to beat the bosses because it means less work for me. And on this one, I was out of my seat screaming like this was a sports match or something and my team just won. I was hyped. An amazing, hard-fought victory for our skeleton army. That brings us to everyone's favorite beatdown, Gideon. Godfrey may have thought we were done with him after killing his grandson, his son, even his ghost, and resurrecting him from the dead. But no, we are back to kill him again. Poor Godfrey, we've killed everything in his life. And now we're about to kill his god. Only one boss left stands between the skeletons and glory. Unfortunately, some of the skeletons decided not to fight until they got hit. Um, I'm not sure why, but it still ended up being an exciting fight.
Ah, finally. What a long fight. I was definitely out of my seat cheering for this one, too. Sorry for the shoddy camera work in this fight. I was trying to get all the skeletons to participate. Anyway, that answers our question. It only takes 13 skeletons to beat Elden Ring. As always, here's the same 13 skeletons against Melania. Thank you so much for watching. This ended up having a lot of really fun fights. Uh, hit the like button if you think so too. Subscribe if you're new, and see you in the next video. Unfortunately, now that the big one is dead, Melania pretty much wins. And this fight goes, goes on for like 10 more minutes after this because she doesn't quite finish off the skeletons that she downs. But I'm going to cut it short here because it's pretty much just another 10 minutes of her going back and forth between the skeletons. So yeah, Melania wins. I'm not going to drag this video out for another 10 minutes.